Hi everyone, and welcome back. We've got another autonomic pathway to cover here, and this is related to the greater petrosal nerve. So in this video, we're going to talk about what is the greater petrosal nerve and what is its relationship to the middle ear. Now the greater petrosal nerve innervates the lacrimal gland, you'll remember that from the orbit lectures, and it is a branch of the facial nerve. So what we see in this image here is the facial nerve and its intermediate root here in white coming together through the internal acoustic meatus to enter into the temporal bone. Now the intermediate root is containing fibers both for sensory and parasympathetics. Now all of the fibers will pass through this geniculate ganglion and the sensory fibers will leave a cell body behind. So beyond the geniculate ganglion, we then see a turn of the facial nerve. And about here is where it would then exit the temporal bone through the stylomastoid foramen. And this portion here is representative of that corded tympani. So the greater petrosal nerve is branching off a of facial nerve at the point of the geniculate ganglion. So we see it comes out of a hiatus in that facial canal to then exit the temporal bone and then sit in this groove in the middle cranial fossa for the greater petrosal nerve. And this will course superior to the middle ear. So it does not enter the middle ear. It is more so superior to it. And we'll find in subsequent um, slides that it actually somewhat parallels the location of the tensor tympani muscle. So we're following the groove for the petrosal nerve and then entering into a foramen. So this foramen here, if you remember from the orbit lecture, is the foramen lacerum. And now as soon as it enters into foramen lacerum, it then will join up with other fibers. So these greater petrosal nerve fibers, we're still talking about preganglionic parasympathetic fibers that then are coursing to join up with sympathetic fibers from the internal carotid artery plexus, which come off the internal carotid artery plexus as the deep petrosal nerve. So the greater petrosal nerve joins with the deep petrosal nerve Parasympathetic is greater, and deep sympathy of the deep petrosal being sympathetic will then course together into this space. And it is a canal, and they've joined together to form the name of that canal, which is the nerve to the pterygoid canal. So these will then lead toward this space right here. Now the pterygoid canal leads to a space called the pterygopalatine fossa. And what sits within the pterygopalatine fossa? The pterygopalatine ganglion. So as we have multiple ganglion here, it's just a reminder, this is the parasympathetic ganglion. So this is where preganglionic parasympathetic fibers from greater petrosal nerve will synapse with postganglionic parasympathetic fibers. And you also note that the deep petrosal nerve fibers, the sympathetic ones, do pass through the ganglion but do not synapse here because these have synapsed elsewhere. Do you remember where? So these would have synapsed in the sympathetic trunk in the sympathetic ganglia. So now we follow these both out into V2. So there isn't a full consensus on exactly how the fibers go from V2 to get to that lacrimal gland, but there are a couple hypotheses, one of which is that it will follow the zygomatic nerve, the branch of V2, and it may then follow the zygomaticotemporal nerve, which is a branch of the zygomatic nerve, and, and or jump onto a branch of V1, the lacrimal nerve, to reach the lacrimal gland. And I want to note as well, obviously, these fibers going up toward the lacrimal gland will supply that. But other fibers coming from this pathway will also supply the mucosa of the nasal cavity, the palate, the superior oral cavity, and the oral pharynx. 
So let's take a look relationship wise. So this is similar to what we saw in our other autonomic video with the transparent bones. So from a superior view, with this being anterior, this being medial, here is the facial nerve. So we see it coursing through internal acoustic meatus and then entering into the facial canal. We can also see that here. When we're looking now from a medial view toward lateral, with this being superior and inferior and anterior and posterior. All right. Now there's a swelling on the facial nerve, and that is the geniculate ganglion. Remember, that is a sensory ganglion. From here is where we see the branch come off. So this is the greater petrosal nerve. Now this will course over superior to the middle ear structures. And you also see here how it courses anteriorly and somewhat in parallel to this tensor tympani muscle. Now from this view, we can follow facial nerve on the right side here, follow facial nerve, see where it gives off corda tympani, which then would carry on. And that's the nerve we're seeing here as well toward the petrotympanic fissure. And then the last part is that facial nerve will exit the temporal bone through the stylomastoid foramen. So the big thing I want to show you here is this is the middle ear, right? And the greater petrosal nerve is not within it, but superior to it. And it'll course from the geniculate ganglion anteriorly toward the foramen lacerum. So similar to what we saw with the lesser petrosal nerve, let's follow this nerve in the middle cranial fossa toward the foramen lacerum. So here's that petrous part of the bone. We see where greater petrosal nerve would exit the petrous part of the temporal bone, course along this groove, and then head toward foramen lacerum. Here in yellow is the lesser petrosal nerve in its groove toward foramen ovale. So you can see that foramen lacerum here and here, found more medially and superiorly to the lesser petrosal and the foramen ovale. So now from an inferior view of the skull, here is the foramen lacerum here and here. And this is where the greater petrosal nerve will exit the skull. And it doesn't quite exit the cranial cavity completely because then it courses into another foramen or a canal, which is the pterygoid canal. So this small pinpoint here, you can imagine the nerve coming off here, joining with deep petrosal, with the, which is sympathetic um, fibers, traveling into this canal and then into the pterygo palatine fossa, which would be found superior to where my mouse is right now. All right, so let's do a little bit of review on autonomics. So with which parasympathetic ganglion or ganglia is the facial nerve associated? And I want you to choose all that apply. Let's go ahead and pause so you can make your decision. And when you're ready, what did you choose? So as a hint, these two pathways here on the right are the pathways that involve facial nerve. So here is facial nerve and here is facial nerve. Now one of the branches here comes off and the other one is here. So let's think about the one we just looked at. What ganglion is associated with the greater petrosal nerve and the lacrimal gland. So that will be the pterygopalatine ganglion. Now what about the ganglion associated with the corda tympani nerve and the submandibular and sublingual glands? So that here is the submandibular ganglion. 
So which cranial nerve is associated with the ciliary ganglion? So that is cranial nerve three, or the oculomotor nerve. What about the otic ganglion? That will be cranial nerve nine, glossopharyngeal nerve. And that we talked about in the last video in regards to the parotid gland. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video.